Hey, what's up guys, and back to the channel. This episode is gonna be all about this lithium iron phosphate from Bouge RV. So Bouge RV is actually a company that's been around for a while and over the many years or so, I've purchased a lot of equipment from them uh, without even knowing when I first bought them that they were gonna be an established company. So it's not really a company that's just been formed over the last couple months and you know just started importing products and selling them. It's actually an established company that's been around for a while because I own things like cables, coolers, inverters, all little kinds of adapters and stuff from them that I purchased with my own monies, right? So uh, this is not the first battery that they make, but this make a uh, model of this battery is fairly new to market. So uh, since we've been doing uh, a lot of 12 volt work, especially with the 12 volt uh, inverter, we thought we'd go ahead and check this one out. So we're gonna be talking about this uh, life or lithium iron phosphate battery, uh, model number BV12100 today. So if you wanna know more about this, stick with us. All right, so first things first, let's go over the quick specs, right? So this is a 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate, 100 amp hour battery. If you multiply all that together, it pretty much says this is a 1.2 80 kilowatt hour battery, right? So uh, the charging voltage of a 12.8 volt battery is gonna be around 14.4 to 14.6 volts. You wanna use a lithium iron phosphate charger and the charge current recommended is 0.2C. So what that comes out to be is about 20 amps. The maximum charge current is 100 amps and the uh, maximum continuous charge current is 100 amps, right? So the peak and the uh, constant current or continuous current are gonna be about the same. When it comes to this charge, it is gonna be a little bit different because the maximum continuous discharge of this battery is rated for 1C, which is 100 amps. Uh, a maximum uh, peak, like surge discharge, so to say, is 330 amps for roughly about 2.5 seconds. Uh, being a lithium iron phosphate battery, it's rated to be cycled about uh, 4,000 times um, and it's got all kinds of protection that that you would expect nowadays as a standard uh, protection built into it right so overcharging protection uh, over recovery protection over discharging protection uh, recovery protection it's got all kinds of things including uh, low temperature uh, charging and discharging protection so if you live in colder climates especially winter coming up uh, that's something you need especially because charging lithium iron phosphate at really cold temperatures is really not good for the battery. So make sure you keep that in mind. Obviously, uh, being a sealed battery like this, it's IP65 rated. And uh, in case you are wondering the size and dimensions of the battery, uh, this battery is in group 24. So this right here is a battery. And as you can see, it's pretty well sealed up. This is considered almost like a waterproof battery. Obviously you don't want to submerge it, but it is waterproof, right? It's completely sealed. Uh, it's got the style that is coming more and more popular these days where if you fold um, the two sides up, it can kind of be like a carrying handle like this and it kind of makes it easy to transport and carry. Uh, so, th so that's the thing, I do appreciate that, especially uh, if you're moving batteries, you know sometimes trying to just lift the battery and get your finger under it becomes a little bit of a challenge, right? But as you can see, it's pretty solid uh, plastic on all sides, including the bottom, in case you wanna know what the bottom look like. It's pretty much all sealed up just like that, right? So on the top, it's actually got the terminals for uh, positive and negative, and it's got uh, pretty much the standard lugs here. And if you wanted to know uh, which size uh, wrench to use for the lugs, you wanna get a 13 millimeter wrench. So even though the uh, lugs uh, have a uh, Phillips head pattern on them, I would highly recommend using a wrench on them, especially because using the wrench gets the uh, driving power pretty much forced on all sides of the bolt. And you don't have to worry about stripping this out or anything like that. And as it comes to these systems, when you're tightening things down, you wanna make sure you torque them down properly and tighten them down properly, especially because the uh, 12 volt system is gonna be carrying a lot of current, right? So let's talk about 12 volt systems just for a second in general. So a lot of people are gonna be using these types of batteries to run AC loads. Uh, what that really means is this is DC power stored in this battery and people are gonna be using it like an inverter 
to take it up to, at least in the US, 120 volts, right? So 12 volts going to 120 volts, and how do you get that? It's about times 10, right? So, cause you gotta move the decimal at least one spot, right? So uh, if you want to get, you know, 120 volts at one amps, you're gonna be carrying 10 amps of this uh, voltage to get there, right? So 120 volts is a huge step up from uh, 12. So uh, you're gonna be using pretty big wires to do that. When you're using big wires and large currents, you wanna make sure you tighten the connections down very well. So I would make sure you use a 13 millimeter wrench, right? So uh, as you can see right here, uh, there's really nothing else going on with the physical part of this battery. Like I mentioned, it's already in group 24. This one has obviously been QC'd or at least that's what the sticker tells me. So what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and test the battery. So here we have the battery connected to the Bouge RV 12 volt, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. If you're interested in that inverter, make sure you check that uh, video out because we have a video review on that inverter. So you would think right now the Bouge RV would, uh, battery would be a perfect pairing for that inverter. There we go. So the breaker is now flipped. As you can see, uh, this part's coming on. This is a DC rated clamp meter. So we're gonna see pretty much how much power we can pull uh, or is coming out of this cable or going into the inverter coming out of the battery, right? As you can see here, here's the inverter specs. So let's go ahead and uh, look at these two screens here because this is gonna tell us the amps. Right now, the battery is at 13.2 volts. The output is 120. We're pulling zero watts. So let's go ahead and hit this heat gun up. And this should be enough because this is a heat gun that can go maybe 16, 1700 watts, 100 watts, which is gonna be exceeding what this can put out. So let's just go ahead and see how that works. Turn it on, hit the light on here. As you can see right there, we're pulling about 45, 42, 43, 44 amps uh, for a 520, 30 uh, watts coming out. Let's go ahead and step it up for a little bit, right? There you go, look at that. Actually, let's hit the speed higher. As you can see, the speed is higher. Uh, the voltage is dri uh, dipping a little bit, but we're pulling uh, close to 900 watts. We got 910, 911, 916. We're pulling about 90 amps, okay? 89 amps, that's about 90 amps. So uh, at 920, 90 amps, if I step it up one more time, it may just push it over limit because remember this battery is only capable at 100 amps continuous. Let's do it. Now we're trying to get to a little more than a thousand. See, we're pulling more than 115. It's taking it, it's definitely taking it. It is able to put a little bit more out, right? So it is pulling more than a hundred amps for a few seconds. Up oh, there it goes, it just dips. Yeah, interesting. It dipped, but it did come back, right? So we're still at 120, 117, close to 1100, 1150 watts. It's actually taking it pretty well. It could probably run this for a few minutes in case you need to run, you know, a little bit more than uh, a, a hundred amps. You can, definitely can do it for a little bit. This wire is not really all that warm yet. It's only it's just been a few seconds. So let's go ahead and step it up all the way and see what happens. 140, 145, 46, 47, 48, or 1400 watts here. 50. That's interesting, uh, mainly because it says rated for 100 watts continuous, but, or 100 amps continuous. We're doing 150% of that because we're at about 150 amps continuous. It's been uh, a little bit, so you know it is taking it. I don't know how long it's going to take it, um, but we'll see.
All right, so here's a bonus item. So I was using the phone and checking on uh, stuff for a different battery, and then I realized there's more batteries on here than I actually have that should work with this. So uh, I clicked on this one, and it showed uh, a few on here, and I was wondering if it was this battery, because obviously this battery is going to have a BMS uh, system built into it. And it, it, interestingly enough, I started drawing power from the battery, which is what you hear in the background, the heat gun sound. And it's saying it's drawing roughly about 70-something uh, watts. So that makes me believe it's the second one right here that says 88%. So let's go into it <clears throat> and see what actually happens, right? So if I go, let's cut the power all the way. See what happens? See, as the gun, the heat gun fan died down, it definitely went down. But just to see if the uh, power draw is even close, <clears throat> firing it up, it looks like it's drawing about 540 something according to the Bouge RV uh, LCD screen that says it's drawing power. So it's definitely this battery for sure. Uh, so in here or in this app, you can tell obviously the uh, fuel gauge, how much is left in the battery, the battery uh, voltage roughly how many amp hours are left, the temperature sensor that's built into the battery, uh, the individual cell voltage, and the manufacturer of the BMS, right? So according to this, the manufacturer of this is uh, JBD uh, BMS because the manufacturer is DG JBD, and that means it's a JBD BMS. So it's got a device name, so that's the main the name of the uh, BMS in case that's what you were looking for and it even tells you in here how many times it's been cycled uh, and any uh, alarms that it went off right so I've only charged it one time as I mentioned earlier and then uh, during that one time in charge it looks like a single cell went over voltage at least once so you know that's interesting so uh, in this it actually says it's a 104 amp hour battery and about 90 uh, 0.8 of it is what's remaining so you know that's actually interesting and good to know but I do appreciate that uh, I can get power or information about the battery through the app mainly because that's always a plus and nice to have you can in, in a way check the fuel gauge of the battery uh, using the app because you know uh, on the battery there's no fuel gauge on, on these batteries built in you know that's just not a thing that that's not what happens in, on these types of batteries at all so using an app to get it and also check the sensors and specs and stats of the battery is really nice huge plus I am interested though why they do not advertise that uh, it has the capability but it is nice that we did find it is possible to do that all right and that's what you really get with this battery so this battery like i said it's fairly new the market uh this model and it's i think around it's probably going to be around uh, 299 or something like that which is a little bit on the higher end of these batteries especially if you look at the market for the for the cheapest things you could possibly get you know they may be close to around like 220 or even 200 or something like that so uh this is going to be a little bit of a premium but it does feel like you know compared to some of the other batteries that i've touched and used it seems to be just a little bit better for that premium right and to, and in fact also be uh, by a company that's prob that's been around and will hopefully probably continue to be around in case you have to get warranty support or anything like that. Uh, that's probably just a little bit safer thing to have and also keep in mind, right? So um, uh, one thing I didn't mention is that uh, this is a 4S or 4P battery, uh, which means, uh, well, the cells in there are obviously going to be, you know, 10 series and stuff like that. But if you want to build a bigger pack, right? So if you wanted to get like four of these, you could put four Four of them in series uh, or you can put four of them in parallel technically speaking you can put them four in parallel and series uh, to get a big pack so if you got four of these you know and each one is about 1.28 uh, watt hours that would be close to about five kilowatt hours almost almost right so with five kilowatt hours if you got four of these you could probably run this inverter for a long time depending on whatever your your needs were right and then um, you wouldn't technically uh, be able to get you know whatever you need to get done depending on the load you're putting on it but you would need to run maintenance on it if you're going to build out a battery system you know with that right because uh, even though the batteries are going to be the same they're using the same components same cells and building it out because you have them in uh, series you know there's going to be drift and uh, degradation of performance over time so if you're going to do something like that make sure every once i'm going to say six or 12 months you go ahead and charge each one up um, all the way or drain it and then charge it up all the way that way you can run maintenance across that 
that, right? So that's one reason you probably don't want to put like four of these in series or something like that. If you put them in parallel, that's much uh, less of an issue. So uh, make sure you keep that in mind. But anyways, four of these in parallel or in series is going to be closer to 48 volts. Four of these in parallel is still 12.8 volts, just in case uh, you were wondering. So. Um, I'm going to contact them, see if we can get like a discount code or something like that. Uh, so if you wanted to pick this battery up, make sure you use the discount code uh, because this discount code will help you get a better deal on this battery, right? So hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, there is a huge plus to it because I did also check out their website. And the website, um, when, you, when you check out the information for the, for the battery, nowhere on the website does it say, Bluetooth. Nowhere on the box or the manual does it say Bluetooth, right? So I don't know why they are not marketing that, but uh, the fact that it does have it is really nice. So uh, that would be one reason that would help push you maybe just to pay a little bit more to get that app connectivity feature. Because as you can see on here, there's no fuel gauge way or anything like that. There's no screen, no information. Only thing you're gonna really be able to get is information coming out by using testing tools like multimeters and clamp meters and stuff like that. So having app connectivity to BMS tool is huge and I would pay a little bit extra for that, right? But that's just me. Anyways, stop jibber jabbering. Hope this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, have a great day. Get back to work and we'll see you guys next time.